Hi guys, James from DBG here, and welcome to uh, the first of what will hopefully be the beginning of a little bit of a series of me actually doing some painting tutorials for a, uh, for a change, instead of just showing you stuff that I've painted. Um, so what I thought I'd do, uh, going through my bits box, I found uh, three or four just odd bolt action miniatures, just in my bits box. Um, so, did a bit of prep work, obviously this is a metal miniature, it's a glue to the base, level the base, etc, etc, and um, so I thought I'd do some painting tutorials on um, how I personally paint these things using the um, paints that I actually have. Um, as you can see, this is a British soldier, um, he is specifically from the Oral Games uh, BEF range. So, spring of 1940. Whoa! Focus. Okay, won't be a video without me saying focus. So yeah, so without further ado, I'm going to uh, paint this little guy up. And uh, we'll see how it turns out. And as I said, this is a bit of an experiment, so do bear with me. Um, this is the first time I've done actually any painting on camera. So yeah. Hopefully it won't be too much of a disaster. Oh, and um, I have to say, we have rather unseasonable weather in the United Kingdom at the moment. It is so windy out there, you can probably hear it. Um, so yeah, if you have any odd noises and stuff, it's just the wind outside. So, without further ado, um, let's start this guy off. So, first of all, um, all the paints I'm using and this particular miniature are Citadel. Um, I do have a selection of Vallejo, Army Painter and Ravel Aquacolor, all of which have their own benefits and not. Um, but I've worked out a really nice way of painting uh, these guys when I first started bolt action, coming out of uh, 40k into historical gaming. So we're going to start off painting the uniform with... Oh, Still Legion Drab. So, without further ado, let's get this guy going. So, as always, give your paints a really good shake. Now, you're going to see me do something that probably will make Duncan, Duncan Rhodes um, incredibly cross. I'm not going to use a palette. And you say, how do I thin my paints? Well, also, I use old paintbrush sheaths as a little bit of a stand there. So what I actually do, um, let me select the correct brush. This is my regiment brush from Army Painter. I'm also a brush licker, so that way it will. So you get your brush wet and then you put it in there and you know, I actually thin my paints in the lid and as you can see, you get the same consistency on your brush as you would with a palette. The only time I use a palette, right, let's get this focus again. Focus, focus. The only time I use a palette is when I'm using uh, paints. Come with a dropper bottle. And as you can see, as long as you keep your brush, as long as you keep your brush wet, your paint stays thin. You've gone out of focus again. Yeah, as long as you keep your brush wet, your paint stays thin. And you don't really need to worry. Now this regiment brush I'm using, that's really going to annoy me. It's probably going to annoy you too. This regiment brush I'm using is not a particularly good one. Um, I bought it in a set. Obviously, in pandemic, I couldn't go to my local hobby shop. I actually select the brushes I use because I'm very particular about the brushes that I buy. I couldn't select them. Focus down your eyes. So I um, had to buy a set of them and yeah, I told you this is going to be an experiment. <laughs> there we go. I had to buy a set and Obviously, you can't guarantee the quality of each brush. 
so sorry I'm trying to get used to actually looking through the camera not the miniature so it doesn't you may see I'm being a bit messy it doesn't actually matter as long as you get a good cover on the entirety of the uniform whereas the other stuff you're going to be picking up as you go along anyway so what I'm going to do I'm going to put this guy down I'm going to finish off just please focus finish off um, getting a good cover in I've gone a bit thick there and then we'll go on to the next colour. Okay, as you can see, two thin coats of Steel Legion drab all over the uniform. Um, doesn't matter if it gets from the equipment because we're going to be doing that in a bit. But the next thing we're going to need to do is the helmet because the chin strap, as you can see, goes over the brim of the helmet is going to be the same colour as the webbing and the gaiters for that matter. So we need to do that first so we don't get any different colours of green on different areas. So um, I did say that every paint I'll be using would be uh, Citadel apart from this one. This is Ravel Aqua Colours Bronze Green. Um, I thought I had some I think it's Castellan Green, which is pretty much exactly the same colour as this, um, but I don't. So there you go, I had to use this instead. Um, so yeah, the good thing about these is you can actually get quite a lot of paint in these pots. Uh, you get 18 millilitres compared to, I think it's 12 for the Games Workshop one. Um, and the lid comes off and it acts as a little base and a little palette that you can thin your paint in. Um, but the bad thing about these is, because of the way paint works, it gums up a bit, and if you don't clean it up properly, these dry out really, really quickly. Anyway, so, let's pop that open. I've already given it a bit of a shake, so, that's what I mean. And we're going to, sorry, brush liquor, a bit of water, Bit of paint and then we're just going to carefully sorry this is the first time I've done this properly carefully paint in the helmet being very very careful not to get any on the uniform especially around the back here And if we just go under the rim, because that's actually going to go help once the washers go on. Come on, there we go. So once the washers go on, that's going to create definition between the helmet and the flesh, and hopefully create some natural shading. Well, the wash will help create natural shading. All right, so there we go. There's the helmet done. Now we'll just leave that to dry. We'll come back and we'll do the webbing. Okay, now that the helm is done, we're going to start working on the webbing and straps and equipment um, and gates and stuff. Now all British stuff was made of canvas or treated canvas type stuff. And it was all um, shades of green and the perfect I found the perfect shade of green to use is actually um, Death Guard Green. Um, and you're going to need, oh, focus. You're going to need a um, medium sized brush with, a, with, a, with an okay point for this. So I'm going to be using um, the Citadel small airbrush. We could also use um, Character Brush. Or whatever brushes you uh, 
you find useful for the size. Right. Again, apologies, I'm getting used to this. I did do a couple of test runs, but this is going to take me a while. Well, obviously working around the camera. So we start around the uh, around the gaiters. Don't worry if you go focus. See if that helps. Don't worry if you go over onto the uniform too much. Still try not to, because it is really, really annoying having to go back over stuff. Especially if you're batch painting. Like these guys, I would batch paint five at a time. So I'll find any more than five. It does get a little bit tricky. So, the gators, and what I'm just going to do, I'm just going to point out the area. So, you've got the uh, ammo pouches at the front there. You have the respirator bag here. It's basically where you kept his, um, his gas mask. Obviously we have the belt, which is just there, and the other ammo bag there. And on the back, we have his knapsack. We have, again, his belt and the straps. We also have the straps along the canteen and then we have uh, the, the uh, shovel cover the belt and these straps attaching got the bayonet there so just go around the rest of the model like that filling in all the, uh, the webbing and stuff and then uh, we'll see how it looks like when it's done Okay, well, as you can see, all the webbing and straps, gaiters have been done. It's all nice and dry. So now we're going to do um, we're going to do two colours. We're going to do the brown for all the wood and um, felt areas, and we're going to do the black, which is purely for the boots and the metalwork on the Lee Enfield rifle. So, the two colours we're going to need are dry bark and Abaddon black. So, I will start with the dry bark. Remember, do shake everything properly. And use these handy... Paintbrush sheaths, they're really handy for um, keeping a pot open. They're what we need. Again, we need a um, member to thin it. I know I'm not using a palette, and I know some people may not like that, but it's just the way I've done it for a very long time. So, we're going to knee, we just carefully missing the uniform. I hope if I did it in shot, wouldn't it? Just missing the uniform. Try not to get it anywhere you don't want to. Now the Enfield actually is a fully, fully enclosed wooden barrel. So you don't need to leave anything on the top like you would with a uh, Mauser or a Springfield. The, I can't remember the name of the Japanese rifle. Yeah, see this is a tricky bit in here. Try and get along there, not getting it on the uniform. Anyway, obviously I'll finish that bit off in a sec. Next thing we need to do <coughs> is the um, Water bottle. Now the water bottle is actually covered in felt, but obviously it needs base coating and brown, um, so it will, have a, it will have a different finish to all the woodwork. And as you can see, I've just gone over a bit there. Not a problem. I'll just go back in and tidy up 
with the Death Guard Green. Last but not least, we have the handle of the uh, bayonet. Come on, Jones. And the handle of the entrenching tool. Again, don't worry if you get any. In fact, I'm going to paint the bayonet as well. Don't worry if you get any um, paint on the trousers. It's very easy to tidy up. There we go. Right. Well, that's that bit done. I'm going to go on to the next bit, which is the Abbott Black. Again, giving it a good shake and putting the little sheath. This is for the boots. Okay, these are all British infantry soldiers, apart from officers, had black ankle boots. Officers had brown ankle boots. I don't know why, probably something to do with uh, I think brown leather was more expensive, I don't know. Yeah, so we just get the boots in. And don't forget, you need a bit of a this is a brand new brush and it's already splitting. The joys of internet shopping. All right, now on the bayonet, some things we need to deal with. Uh, there's a little bit of a cross guard there. And then we have the pommel just there. Now onto the rifle itself. We have the magazine and trigger guard. We have the butt plate, which should be brass. But um, may not be at the end of this one. And then we need the bolt and rear sight along here. And then finally, the foresight and bayonet lug and then there's a barrel. There is some bands, some steel, steel bands somewhere. I think it's just there behind his hand. We need to get hold of as well. And obviously we need to get that bit at the back here. And being careful of the uniform and the respirator bag. So, that's all those bits baits coated. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back around, make sure I've got everything because you can probably see I've missed a couple of bits. Um, and then we'll come back on and we'll do the flesh. Right, there we go. Everything's all tidied up and base coated. So, the last thing to do before we do focus. The last thing we need to do before we um, get on with the washes is the flesh, which is really easy. I have a very simple way of doing flesh. Uh, we're going to start, sorry, British cup of tea. Um, we're going to start with everyone's favourite uh, Bugman's Glow. Again, because it's a base paint, it's quite thick, so give it a good shake. Use your little holdy opening thing. And let's see if I can keep it in shot for a change while I do this. So, a little bit of Bugman's Glow. Again, remember to be neat. Oh, no. I'm just thinking I've got it in shot and I haven't. Keeping it neat. 
You don't need to worry about the straps. Don't even need to worry about the hair. That will all be taken care of in the wash stage. And obviously the chin strap for this guy is actually on top of his helmet. Which is something the British seem to do quite a lot of in both world wars. As you can see, I've just got a little bit on the collar of his battle dress. It's not a problem. So yeah, just going to continue with the flesh. And then when it's dry, we'll get on with the wash. Now the wash stage may actually shock you what I'm going to do but I've been doing it for so long and it works perfectly every time so yeah um, I'm going to get on and get the rest of this flesh breast coated in and then we'll talk about some washes right as you can see flesh is on everything is neatened up So all we need to do now is add the wash. Now, the way I do this, yes, I do. I use skill in the pot. I use none oil. It is a really good shade. This Agrax um, Ruckle and Flesh shade are amazing. Um, I know people are quite derogatory about these shades, but they actually work really well. And if you use, like using shades, then don't let other people tell you any different gives you the uh, effect you want then don't worry about it now this i'm going to slap all over the model i'm not going to do any uh, flesh washes or green washes over the green or flesh flesh parts this goes all over the model and in case everyone keeps knocking over their um shades this is what i use it's just a ring this is see how old it is it's just a ring of blue tack shaped so you, your shade goes straight in so make sure it's secure get your trusty citadel shade brush as you can see this one's used been used a lot Obviously, you don't want it too thick. Again, you use the lip of your pot or a palette, depends on. And just liberally put it all over the model. Get some more on that. Well, and obviously, remember golden rules about keeping it in shot focusing focus focus it's because it's focusing on the oh. there we go right it's got it so all over make sure it doesn't pull in any areas because you want a nice even coat And there we go, done. Simple as that. So we'll come back in half hour, 40 minutes when it's properly dry and we'll start the highlighting process. Okay, here we are. The non oil is completely dry. And as you can see, it's done what the magic water uh, does very well. It's gone into all the recesses, obviously. I did double check, nothing was pulled. <clears throat> and you can see it's given everything a lovely amount of definition. Now comes the task of highlighting everything. So the first thing we're going to do is the battle dress. Now we're going to need two colours for that. So obviously the first colour is to go back over it with Still Legion Drab. And then we'll do a simple highlight 
with Bane Blade Brown. So, as usual, give your pot a shake, put in your little hold reopening thing, and I am going to use one of my favourite brushes from Army, Paint, Army Painter, which is um, the Insane Detail Brush. It is a really nice brush, and I found the Army Painter brushes on the whole keep their points. Occasionally they don't. It's not like you do about it. But on the whole, keep their point. So as usual, load the brush up with a bit of water, thin it down in the lid, and then what we're going to do is we're just going to follow around places. So this is the matte pouch on the front of the trousers. Look. And then we're just going to follow around. Just bringing out the creases in the trousers of the battle. Whoa! That's what happens when you're not the camera. Bring out the creases in the battle dress. And obviously leaving some of the wash in place in the recesses. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go around and I'm going to do all that and I'm going to come back for the next highlight. Right, there we go. That's the reapplication of the Steel Legion Drab. As you can see, a lot of the shades have been left in the recesses. So there's lots of definition, all the creases and stuff. So now, I've already got my Bane Blade Brown open. Again, my brush is nice and moist. And um, we're now going to just sort of edge highlight. We're not going to edge edge highlight. We're going to sort of edge highlight. So again, now around things like pockets and the creases and the knee. And if you think it's getting a bit too thick, you can just moisten your brush and feather it out. Sorry, as I've said many times, this is something I'm still getting used to painting through a camera. So again, I'm probably going a bit too heavy there. So just moisten your brush feather it through. So I'm going to do something on the other arm, something that's a bit more defined. So obviously the light's going to hit it there. It's obviously quite a lot. So just moisten your brush and feather it down. That way you've still got some definition there. I guess do the cuffs. I probably need to get a bit more. Of that. So there you go. You get the idea. I'm now going to go around the whole of the model, and uh, we'll come back in a bit and see how it looks. So there we go. There is the battle dress all highlighted up. So now. Uh, we're going to highlight the greens. So first of all, we're going to do the helmet. The helmet is basically just going to go back over it, giving it a little bit of definition with the um, bronze green from Ravel. Then we're on to the webbing and gaiters. That will be done with going back over with the Death Bar green and a highlight. Whoa, focus. 
thought I'd lock that. Come on, come on, come on. <sighs> um, where was I? Yeah, um, Jathcar Green and then Nurgling Green for a highlight there. And then that should be the green done. So, first of all, I've got everything open ready. Um, just to try and speed things up a bit. So, first things first, the helmet. Woo! The helmet. So, we don't want to create too much of a difference. So, it is literally just a case of filling in the top of the helmet and then the rim and then it's pretty much done it takes any sort of watermark effects away from the wash and just gives you a bit more definition on the helmet so next back with the death guard green they're ready to go and I'm going to just concentrate on the knapsack again on the areas which is the top we just go back over and fill in Obviously leaving some of the wash in place, giving yourself a nice bit of definition. So, shouldn't take too long. The uh, iconic British 37 pattern webbing, so called because it was designed and issued to the British troops in 1937. Sorry to say British and Commonwealth troops because the Commonwealth troops also had this set of webbing throughout the war. There we go. That is, well, that should be. So I'm just going to do the underside of the yeah. There we go. That's that done. Last but not least, the final highlight. Just oh, I didn't. Oh well. The final highlight of Nurgling Green. Again, make sure your brush is very moist so it doesn't go on too thickly. You should just need one coat that was a bit thick. So again, just moisten your brush can easily feather it out and that's the joy of acrylic paint is you can easily easily sort out any sort of mistake you may see or you may make I should say All right, so this time I'll remember to do the helmet strap remembered I didn't do the gaiters either. Oh well. Shouldn't hurt too much, we'll just go straight over with some Nurgling Green. So again, that's what I like doing. I like to 
just get a nice bit of on and then you feather it across just so it gives it a nice bit of definition remembering all the time to keep your brush nice and moist and I think I may have gone a bit heavy there So, just got the finish of the knapsack, the belt, just there. Well, give me the paint. The sheath for the bayonet. I'll just do a little bit of definition on the gaiters, as I missed them before. Need to get that all right there we go that's the greens done so now we're on to uh, the woodwork and the um, felt of the uh, canteen okay woodwork and felt this is going to be four colours. First of all, the felt on the um, water bottle, Gawthor Brown. And then the woodwork. We're going to go back over with uh, dry bark, then highlight it, Mournfang Brown, and then edge highlight with Scrag Brown. Because um, British Firearms had a very rich sort of rosewood type effect. All the wood was quite a rich colour. So, anyway, first of all, Gawthor Brown. Now, this is really quick. It's just a case of four little dabs. So, we get it. Uh, Mr. Tommy here. Focus. There we go. Get Mr. Tommy here. And it is just literally a case of dabbing a little bit on each corner of the canteen and the one on the cork. And it's done. That's it. It's canteen done. So Gawthor Brown can go back in the pile. Now back on with the rest of the woodwork. So to get a bit of definition back, I'm gonna go straight back over with Remember, very moist brush. Away. There we go. Straight back over with this. Dry bark. And then on stock of the rifle, the furniture there. We're not going to bother to do um, the back because that's in shadow. So, dried bark can go back. So bear with me because, as usual, Games Workshop paints are spreading their joy all over the place. Um, so now we need the Mournfang Brown. Again, this is to layer over. Now, as you can see, that's quite thick. That's because Mournfang Brown can do that. So we want quite a bit of water in there. There we go. So we just run some of that Mournfang Brown over the Lee Enfield and on 
the stock on the bottom part of the furniture the top part of the furniture and the front there also we're going to do a little bit of the bayonet and the entrenching tool handle down the side there that's that bit done and last not least, give it that nice wooden finish, some scrag brown. Now luckily this one's quite a thin paint, but not too thin. But you still need, as always, moisten your brush and get a nice flow going. We're actually just going to do a little bit there, a little bit on the handle, leave the actual bayonet sheath because that was, well, I think this time of the war, I was thinking it was still leather, but later on in the war, it was definitely canvas. So, again, just going over the areas we did before. Just give that rich sandy wood colour. Obviously trying to keep it in focus, which would help James. Right. That's the wood done. So. Let's just have a look. Can see has come together quite nicely. Just a few more details to do. Slight highlight on the boots. I don't normally highlight the boots, um, especially when I base them, but I, I do a little bit of definition on the metal work, and then last but not least, we'll do the flesh and the eyes. So, what's next? Next is the boots. because these are only single colours now. I'm going to just keep filming instead of stopping. So I should say what the highlight is, but the highlight colour is Eschen Grey. Again, moist brush. And we just do the toe caps. the side parts. Once your basic material is down you really can't see this is why I tend not to do it. So that's the Eschen Grey done. We've got the um, metal work which a lot of people just leave black um, because the metal work was generally black but we're going to be using Lead Belcher. And we're not going too mad with this. So on the back here, we just want a little touch on the bayonet, on the pommel, and what would be effectively the lug that attaches to the end of the PM field. A little bit on the end of the scabbard. And a couple of lines of the magazine, trigger guard, forward sight over the breech, the cocking handle. Was it the cocking handle? Bolt. I'm talking about the bolt, James. A little bit. Just a little bit of definition at the end. So there you go. That's that. As you can see, that's really brought out the um, the rifle. So um, I need to prep the um, flesh colours now. 
So join me in a sec. Okay, now we're on to the final step, which is the flesh. Uh, for some reason, I always do the flesh last. I don't know why. Um, but as you can see, it's the one thing that's showing a great amount of difference towards the finished miniature. Anyway, it's quite simple. We're going to go back over with Bugman's Glow. Then layer over with Cadian Flesh Tone. And final highlight, the Kislev Flesh. And that's the flesh done. So as always, give your paints a good shake. And moisten your brush, thin your paint in the lid. And we're just going to layer over all the fleshy bits. Again, leaving the wash in the recesses. Now onto the face. So down the nose, across the ridge, the eyebrows, down the cheekbone, across the top lip, bottom lip, chin, other cheekbone. As you can see, it's already taken away some of the stuff that the uh, wash leaves behind, a little bit of satin look, especially from none oil to the neck. There we go. There's the face already looking a little bit better. So that goes back. Now, time to layer on the Cadian flesh tone. Now my Cadian flesh tone is actually running out a bit. And it is becoming a little bit gloopy, so I might need a bit more water. Here we go. So again, we do exactly the same thing. We pick out the details. Actually, there's a bit too much water there. fingers just make sure you've got all the fingers <laughs> now onto the face Need to be a little bit more selective where we put it here. So obviously the bridge of the nose, just under the eyes, top of the cheeks, because this guy's nose is quite big and he's using nostrils, lips, to his ear. In a little bit of the neck just to give a little bit of definition obviously if you're going for the realistic look you wouldn't do that and we need to do the thumb over here so as you can see the face has got far more definition now we just need to do the final highlight of 
Canadian flesh tone. And then the last thing we need to do is the eyes, because the eyes on this miniature are actually really well defined. Sometimes they're not. Sometimes you can get away with just leaving a bit of wash in there or just filling in with some uh, with a, a rich brown like um, Rhinox Hyde. But this guy actually has rather large eyes, so we're going to have to do something about that. Anyway, so get your paint ready in the same way. And try and fix that mess I made of that hand. Yeah, you don't want to go too mad. You just want to pick out the top edges. Again, you want eyebrows. I think if it is a T nostril, it's quite big. Cheekbones. Lips, yeah. And as you can see, I've just messed that up. So because it's acrylic, wet your brush, you can feather it, feather it out. There we go. So, let's have a look at that. Not too bad, not too bad at all. So, now we're onto the eyes. Now, the way I do eyes, first of all, you need a small brush that you're comfortable with. I will show you that in a minute. And I use two colors, the eyes. I use Corvus Black to go in first and then Wolfheim Grey to pick out um, the whites of the eyes. Obviously there are some crazy insane people out there who actually do the colour of the eyes as well, but I'm not one of those crazy insane people. So, and the brush I'm going to be using is um, Psycho. As you can see, it's got really really small point. So again, thin your paint and you just want to put a little black line in each eye. Yeah, I think you can see that. Come on focus. And then obviously shake it all from grey. Now all from grey is a really, really horrible habit of drying out and going thick very quickly. Don't know why, it just does. So you just want the tiniest, tiniest amount on the brush. And I'm actually looking at the miniature, not the screen here, so I can see what I'm doing properly. So it might go out of focus, and there's not a lot I can do about it. So I just do a little dot. Little dot, little dot. See, if you make a mistake like that, can if you're very quick no I'm gonna to have to go back in with the black no I just need to do the other side of that eye there we go I have to quickly go back in with the black on the other side 
not whoop, too much of a hardship. There we go. I might need a little bit more definition in that eye. There we go. Much better. So. There we go. There is. If I can just write. I need to. There we go. There is your British BEF infantryman finished and ready for basing. I'm putting him with the rest of his infantry section. So, um, I hope you guys have stuck with me long enough. Uh, this is a longer than usual video. And it is, as I said before, the first time I have actually painted anything on camera. So, uh, yeah. Obviously, constructive criticism would be greatly received in the comments. I do have another three miniatures that I found in my um, this box to do. Um, they are a late war British officer, a early war German SS infantry trooper, and a grenadier, late war German grenadier. So, in the comments section, if you leave a comment of which one you'd like to see me to, uh, to do next. That'd be really cool. And as usual, guys, um, do check out all the links and stuff in the description, all the YouTube -y stuff. I hope you found this useful. And uh, stay safe, take care, and I'll catch you guys next time.